What's up, everybody? Welcome to Heresy Financial. Today, we're talking about a little bit of a sober topic here about what has recently happened in Lebanon, the explosion at the port, and how this is just one more thing that is adding to the massive economic crisis and the massive economic depression recession that they are having there, and it will only further the troubles that they are going through and also how it is uh, everything that they're going through is not just unique to Lebanon, but it is really a sign, a warning sign, if you will, of things that are about to start happening all over the world, not just isolated in countries like Lebanon. Let's dive in. So as of the recording of this video, there is no official answer yet as to what caused the explosion. So by the time you are watching this, you might know more information already about what caused the explosion. But as of right now, the best guess is that it was caused by a fire that was started as a result of some welding that was taking place to prevent theft of ammonia nitrate. And uh, it's very flammable, very explosive chemical. And it looks like that led to a fire, which led to the ultimate explosion here. So ultimately, in the end, it could turn out to be something. It could turn out to be an actual attack, an actual bomb. This could escalate into something much larger. But even if it's just the accident as is, there are massive injury numbers as of right now and very sad death numbers as well. And so even though we're spending this video talking about the economic ramifications of this and everything that Lebanon has been going through, I don't want to glance over the fact that this is obviously a massive tragedy because of the human life involved. Now, Lebanon has been going through escalating financial and economic crises for years now, culminating really in last year when they defaulted on their bonds and really started to implode. And it highlighted the Ponzi scheme, the an actual Ponzi scheme that the government of Lebanon has been running. Now, I'm sure you are all aware, but a Ponzi scheme is named after Charles Ponzi, the Italian who saw an arbitrage investment able to be played out between countries with postage costs. And so he presented this investment to people. And then when they invested, instead of actually taking this and going and investing the way he told them he was going to, he just used new investor money to pay out returns to old investors. And since the returns were so great, he kept on attracting more and more and more investors to the tune of, I think he got up to about $130 million in today's money. Once people caught wind of the fact that these returns were really impossible and that he couldn't actually be doing what he was saying, people rushed to get their investments, rushed to get their money out. He was locked up and deported. But the name stuck and the largest private Ponzi scheme to date has been Bernie Madoff which actually ends with a decent story for the victims because they've received almost 100%, I believe, at this point of the money that they lost to that Ponzi scheme. Now, I specify largest private Ponzi scheme because most governments operate Ponzi schemes and they're much larger than anything that Bernie Madoff or Charles Ponzi or anybody else in the private sector have ever done. Now, Lebanon's Ponzi scheme has obviously come to a head and it has imploded, resulting in economic hardship, depression, recession, and hyperinflation in Lebanon. But the scary thing is, is that it's not unique to Lebanon. Things like social security in the United States are by definition Ponzi schemes. And at some point, Ponzi schemes always fail. Now they can last a very long time because ultimately it is just dependent on a couple of things. Number one, you have to still be getting enough money incoming to pay out what is outgoing. The second thing is you need to retain confidence by people to continue to do that. And so once confidence is broken, that's when things really start to escalate and get out of control. One of the reasons why the financial crisis escalated so severely in Lebanon when the confidence was lost is just due to the fact that they don't have the same weight internationally as like the United States does, obviously. What countries like the United States are doing economically and financially are much worse and much more severe than what Lebanon was doing. When you have a bunch of debt and then the only way you can pay that debt is to print new money, you destroy your currency. Now, obviously, this is exactly what the United States is doing. We have a ton of national debt, and the only way that that national debt is being paid off is by printing new money to pay that off. And the only reason that hasn't resulted in a devastating worldwide collapse so far is because just because everybody in the world 
still uses the dollar. And so there's a lot more slack in the system to abuse for a country like the United States versus a country like Lebanon. But the fact of the matter is you can't outrun financial consequences forever. At some point, those consequences will be realized. And unfortunately, we are going to see more of the, this type of thing happen that we're seeing in Lebanon all around the world because it's really a symptom of the system and how it's set up and how central banks operate with fiat currency. Systems that are established on fiat currency systems are destined by nature to collapse. Now this port that had the explosion this morning in Lebanon looks like it was vital to their economy, which is extremely unfortunate because they're already going through so much economic hardship right now from government overreach, corruption, hyperinflation, laws that prevent people from getting back up on their feet, enforced by a government with a monopoly on violence who uses that violence in a very aggressive fashion. With all these hurdles that the people of Lebanon have to overcome already, this is just a massive devastating blow to them. Now, while I'm no expert in politics, economics and politics do usually have overlap, especially at the point of collapse. That's when things really start to bubble up and start to fuse together in ways that are difficult to separate. But what is clear is that throughout history, whenever governments become way too big and they start to make decisions about what people can and can't do and what wealth people can and can't have and what types of business practices people can and cannot engage in and then fund all of that enforcement through the debasement of currency, the dilution of coin or the outright printing of money. It always results in massive problems that usually disguise the original source of the problem. And of course I know they have other issues there that we don't have in the United States or in other countries around the world. I know culture plays a big part. I know influence by organizations like Hezbollah play a big part. But the fact of the matter is that monetary decisions and big government are almost always at the core of a society that is in turmoil. Now the Lebanon pound used to be pegged to the dollar and as of right now, it looks like the real exchange rate is somewhere around 4,000 to one. This is important because it highlights what happens to a country that goes through an economic collapse marked by a currency collapse. And I just did a full four part series on how to navigate through a currency collapse. You can find those on my channel. But anybody who kept their savings in the Lebanon pound got their savings wiped out. And what is going to happen as a result is at some point, somehow, a new currency will be issued there. Now, if it's not backed up by anything with strong intrinsic value, that new currency will likely fail. Every time a country has a currency collapse and then they issue a a new currency that is backed by nothing, just the faith of the government, that new currency usually very quickly collapses. An, a sustainable currency, the only currencies that make it after a previous collapse are ones that are backed by something of hard intrinsic value, usually gold or silver. But anybody in Lebanon right now who, let's say they even put their savings in dollars, you're having a, an extremely hard time right now even spending that. There are a lot of restrictions on what you can do with your money, even if you have US dollars. Now, on the other hand, if you were in Lebanon and you had kept your savings in one or two or three ounces of gold in your home, the only thing you have to worry about is number one, somebody knowing that you have it, and then number two, somebody coming and trying to steal it. Other than that, your savings have been perfectly preserved, if not made you some money. You'd be in a perfect position right now or any time to go take some of that gold or silver and exchange it for something that is expensive in when you measure it by the local currency. Bread and meat and even basic utilities are getting so expensive that they're out of reach when measured in the local currency, even getting there now measured in dollars. But anybody who stored some of their wealth in physical precious metals would have preserved their purchasing power and has a lifeboat, a safety boat to be able to help them through these hard times. And then if they tomorrow decide we're going to issue a new currency, you can go buy 
the correct amount of that new currency with whatever gold or silver you have and continue to be able to exchange and you don't miss any steps. You don't have that massive amount of your net worth, your wealth, your savings destroyed because you held it in the past, the previous currency that got wiped out. Now, incidentally, today, gold and silver have continued their monstrous rally. Gold surpassed 2,000 US dollars per ounce and held. Silver got back over 26 US dollars per ounce. And so far, it is looking like it is holding there as well. So as a personal takeaway, knowing that a couple individual people here and there, we can't influence what the political powers decide to do in our countries. They have very real power that can bankrupt and destroy economies and civilizations and societies and people and countries. But as individuals, what we can do is study what happens and then position ourselves in order to prepare ourselves against whatever disaster might follow. And financially, historically, there's no better way to preserve your savings, to preserve your purchasing power than by holding it in physical gold or silver. I've linked a couple resources in the description below if you want to do a little bit more research on what is happening in Lebanon right now. A report released by Jim Rickards earlier today actually about the whole you know crisis, economic crisis unfolding in Lebanon right now is included in there. It's a good read and so I encourage you if you want to take a deeper look, go ahead and read those materials because they're packed with a lot more information than what we can deliver here in one video. If you like the video, please hit that like button. It really does help out the channel for those YouTube algorithms. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.